name is Gary Comfort. I teach down at the Adrian campus. I uh, teach mostly from basic math up to intermediate algebra. Um, I've had presidents teach all of them. Um, I'm one of the non-traditional teachers because I got my degree after 25 years of beating my head against the ball and having a life and doing stuff. So I am a, got my degree in 2008 and started teaching at JCC in 2009. And it's been a roller coaster since I love it. This is a great game. Like I was telling um, people earlier, for me, this is like the big time, the big time for me. Teaching, usually I have a small classroom, so I don't have to boom my voice out, even though I do. And I thought I would have a little bit more people in here, but that's okay. That makes me less nervous. But um, what I'd like to start out with is that how many people have heard of the iClicker? Have you used it? Okay. Because I did my senior project on the iClicker. And at the time, the, uh, this is the base unit. Everyone comes with a base unit. It's, in this size room, it will handle all the people that can sit in here. And they said the seating in here is 75 people. If you had 75 iClickers, this base would pick it up. The cool thing about the base is it comes with the remote for the instructor. The remote from the instructor, what I found out when I was playing around in here, because I hadn't played with it in a couple years, is that it advances my screen. So I'm no longer standing here all the time, is if I turn it on, I can come out in the crowd, and also in my students who have a tendency to be playing on their iPhones and stuff like that, and I could look over their shoulder and say, uh, let's not do that. So that's the kind of stuff that I would like to do, because I, most of the time, am up here. So if I was to use something like this, I would use it, uh, quiz, get participation, because I can keep track of everybody. I can keep track of everybody that responded. When we get a chance, I'm going to hand everybody an eye clicker and we're going to play. Let's see, go. This is the instructor or presenter's remote. This handles the computer, it handles the going when you do PowerPoint presentations. It starts and stops. As you can see down here at the bottom, what you don't normally see on a um, PowerPoint presentation, that's the iClicker menu. When I'm ready to start, I can click start on that, and it will let you guys get a chance to play along with me here. The, oh, the iClicker Plus is your basic iClicker model. Okay. It does have some advantages in here, is I don't know if you can see it real close, but it has Braille. So even if you have blind students, they can find their way down to answer multiple choice questions and aren't being left out. So I thought that was one of the, the coolest aspects of this thing. This is the iClicker 2. This does everything. The iClicker before was just a multiple guess type of device. Now that's not the case anymore. We can do a polling thing. Say that I was going to ask you guys, um, how many years have you taught for, for my um, teachers in here and whatever. And you can put in here a numeric number, and I could track it in a graph, and it would, we can compare everybody in an instant by looking at the graph to see how many classes that everybody teaches. And we'll be playing with that as well as we get going on. The next generation, there's two of them. One's called iClicker Go. And web clicker, which are apps for your smartphone. Now, grant you, this is the type of thing that you have to work it out with iClicker, and your IT department has to work with them to make sure that the room that you're in has enough capability for that many wireless connections in your room. But they could use their laptops that have the Wi-Fi connection on it, and you can send the device through there to be either a laptop, iPad, iPhone, any of the smart devices that you have out there. And they're really, the salesman told me when I was talking to him about it, because I was curious cost-wise in case somebody was to ask, but they're really trying to develop the web thing because of online schools and the way that schools are dealing with more for the big schools like this is the ability to do polling from home, or whatever, from, from a wireless connection. Um, 
the things you can do with an eye clicker is unlimited. That's only limited to your imagination. Um, you can use polling questions. You can use multiple guess. You can use, um, and I, I say that lovingly. Everybody knows it's multiple choice, but multiple guess. Most of the time, if you don't know, you go eeny, meeny, miny, moe, or always pick C. You know, that's what I was told. Always pick C if you're in a multiple guess. Um, you get instant polling. As soon as you, if you want to ask a question out here, say siblings, number of siblings. So everybody would take their eye clicker and say, I have six, I had seven. I had one woman that we did this in an introductory for statistics, and she had 23 brothers and sisters. Whoa. Now, in statistics, those of you that know, that was an outlier. I mean, that one was the, the chance of that. The only person that I know that's similar to that is my wife has a big family. And up in the thumb, the Essenbacher name was huge. Well, the guy had married twice, and from two wives had 21 children. So that was not unheard of to me until she hit me with 23. I thought, well, that was later on, or, you know, way back when. But no, I think it was the same situation. The parent had more than one. Um, the cool thing about this, the students can see how they could, their answer compares to everybody else right away. And it's totally anonymous to everybody in the classroom. So when you push that button, if you push the wrong answer, the only person that knows you pushed the wrong answer is you. And one of the, the hardest thing that I have found for people is to encourage them to participate in class because nobody wants to sound stupid or be labeled stupid. Now, you say that's okay anonymously and it gets people to participate, but realistically, you can trap them. As you will see, and I will demonstrate when everybody gets an eye clicker, everything has a code on it. When you send your information here, if I haven't got you registered, your remote code will come up onto my computer. And it will be stored in an Excel spreadsheet on a CSV file, which means comma. It's put in all Excel, you can put it in an Excel file, and then see how people responded to your class, and see who is having difficulties, and you can respond to them on a one-to-one -one basis after the class is done, or in college environment, email, can you talk to me before class, can you come stay after class, and we can discuss this, and see how we can work them into doing a different program, or finding a tutor, or setting them up for help outside of the class. So it's a way that the teacher, it's, the student can participate not fearing that they're going to be laughed at or labeled stupid, but the teacher can keep track of the people that truly are getting it, even before the exam. So even before the exam, you can sit back and have the students work a little bit more or address them with each individual student. So I thought that was one of the better things that we could do with it. 100% um, participation. I've had a guy in my class that sits there and during the entire lecture would nod off. If he had to answer it periodically on the remote and that, he could nod off as much as he was doing. And a lot of it was because he didn't get what I was saying, so he, his brain said shut down. But you can incorporate anything into it. The, the, like I said, the, what you can do with this is only left to your imagination. I have incorporated some of the stuff on the internet that I'm going to bring in and we're going to answer questions based on that. You can do vocabulary tests, especially, you know, people don't think of math as a language, but it is. If you can't, it's a foreign language to most people, and if they don't know the vocabulary, then they can't have an, uh, I can't say intelligent, can't have a learned conversation with you because they'll say something wrong. And they need to understand the goals in that too. So even in a math class you can do this and you can keep track, like I've said, you can keep track of their responses. Now, let's, I know everybody wants to play with one of these, so let me, let you help me Eye Clicker 2, say hello to everybody. All right, 
What you do is the yellow button here that says on, push it on. Okay? Now it should say welcome and ready. Okay, now the reason it says ready is because it's waiting for me to start asking you a question and asking input. So I know everybody wants to play, so the first thing I'm going to introduce you to is I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to start it. Now as you can see up here, the timer's going off and tell you how long it takes you to do it. But I just want some everybody to push A, B, C, or D, whichever one you want to do, it doesn't matter to me. And we have three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So when this timer says eight. Press the button. Is it, is it, is it green thing to the register? Who did? Yeah, the green thing should say. I heard something. Okay. This is what happens to you, by the way. Okay. Uh, so one, one person will register. All right, one person did. Who? All right, she did. Register. Um, all right. Send the answer. Let's stop it. Quick send. Now, even if you, it should, if it was a multiple guess, it doesn't need to send. Oh, wait a minute. That's, yes, that's, it does. Hold on, let's try it again. Let's try it again. Let's do it here. And hit go. All right. Now, push A, B, and C and press that. I'm sorry. Okay, it's rolling now. Hey, there we go. Okay, yeah, All right. Just, yeah. One more. All right, everybody's got it. Yep, sends up there. All right. So everybody has their send, so I can push stop. Now I can say show results. And it shows you how everybody responded after we went through that little blip. All right. Now, that was just a multiple guess one. And you can see how you ranked. The popular answer was A. So everybody just said, well, I'm going to push A in that because that was the easiest way to get out of it. But everybody else decided to, to and nobody chose E. Why? I don't know. But we don't care. <laughs> we go on. Now, the next thing we're going to do is let's actually next. All right. This one. When you hit the hit the button here, this button. Yep, that will refresh it. It'll refresh your remote. The blue button refreshes your remote. And now when it says ready, push either one or two for your answer. Is A1 and B2? Yes. No. You go down, I'm sorry, you have to. change it to this type of thing and we start it. Now you have a different thing. Push your refresh and you can see that you now have a number down at the bottom of your screen. You can press either one or two. If you don't like one, or if you've never heard of it, you can go down and press the up arrow can change it to two and then hit send. Now there should be nine this time because I'm using my remote here as well. Blue refresh, and it should give you a number. So go ahead and press, press your answer and just hit send. Okay, now we have nine. The reason we have nine is then be one of the people too. So now we can go up here and I can stop it. And we can do the results. And 66% of everybody has heard of the eye clicker, which I already asked that just for giggles earlier. But now we have I have it documented in the it's keeping track of every question we're doing. What is 0.2 for? I think that's 
because it's the left side is dealing with. Um, I meant to be two. Zero. It actually gave you 0.2? Yeah, it gave you 0.2. Cool. <laughs> I don't understand that because it gave me, one person did it. Yeah, it was him. <laughs> oh, he put 0.2? So oh, that's why. Yeah. It's he, he moved it because by moving the arrows left and right, oh, yeah. you can add more numbers. You can add up to six, 16 characters. Cool. Yeah. So that's the cool thing about it. So even if you're doing math and the math happens to be a very large number, you can enter the numbers in. You just advance after each number until you get the number you want. Then you hit send, and it's as you can see. That's why. All right. Let's go to the next one. First name. Now, let's start it over here because it is a alphanumeric, and we hit start. Now, hit your refresh, and you should come up with an A. Everybody have a name? Yeah. Now, what you do is you go ahead and you type in your name. Uh, right where it's clicked, you go up to advance the letters or down to go the other way. When you get to the letter of your first name, click to the right. Then you have to go back down, like mine's Gary. So I'm going to then click to the right, go back up. And then my last one is Y. So when I get it, I can press send. So everybody understand, once you get your names, one letter is send it to the right. Oh, okay. I just send it for my... <laughs> your your name? Oh, oh. Is it really Edward? Edward. I think if you push it again, it'll accept it again, I believe. We're missing somebody. Yeah. You push it over there? Nope. 0.02 is up here. Yeah, I don't mind. All right. So let's stop it. But we have to have the right remote. And then let's meet everybody here. We'll go to your results. We have RP, Ryan, Vicky, Tom, P, Gary, and E. Now these are the people that don't want to play. <laughs> <laughs> They're just picking on them. But the P and E, that's fine, it doesn't matter. But it just made it faster. <clears throat> and what that basically tells us is that everybody has a unique name. Now if so two people would have been Gary or two people would have been Vicky. Then it would have kept track and said there was two of them named that, and we could have gone that route. But this is how scroll how to keep your letters. I mean, because I put a P, then I put a Sun, I was going to put a no. D, but I didn't. All right, let's try it again. So let's go ahead and get rid of the results, and we're going to go start. Now, refresh your remote. Once you get your. I'm sorry. I'm going to do add on for here. So we do A, and then right arrow. This is the next letter. Oh, okay. And then we have to go up to B, I see over, and then down to A. And I'm typing in Adam just for giggles. And when you get it in there, you just... Then you hit send. So there. Okay. Now my send. I got I think once they get used to the concept of it, and I bet they can manipulate 
that one shown, I bet they can manipulate and put their name on it faster than okay. most adults can. Are we there? All right. Let's have to stop. And now we got everybody's name in there. Oh yeah, because it's on next. Oh, 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 oh. But that's okay. All right. So let's do the next one is what city? We need practice on this, so let's do it. Um, the same thing. We'll start here. And what city are you from? So just hit the refresh. So you start at the beginning. You can hold the button down to zoom. tells you that you sent it correctly and then it was sent to the, the receiver. <laughs> Spelling's not a plus here. <laughs> so much slower leaving a cap yeah, but did it. Does this work with all PowerPoints? Yes. Okay. Next. It helps if you push the right button. Oh, I know what happened. to the eye clicker controls. So now I should be able to go to that. There we go. What's three to the fourth power? Well you get four chances up there. The most popular in my classes would have been A. Then I have to tell them no. No one says the globes. Yes, I think you need to go over that. Now hit the re refresh. There we go. Hit the refresh now. I had it on the wrong. I had any of your answer. It looks like close. It's still closing me out here. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's why. Thank you. Now try it.
Now see, I didn't press send, but I selected the answer that I wanted, and it took it. Me too. So you don't have to sit, hit send all the time. I think it's more when you have to enter in something. Yeah. So let's see what the answer is, and so we'll stop. And everybody says it's D, and we have a few other people that disagree. So everybody says it's D, so let's go to the next slide. It is D. For those of you that were guessing, not a bad deal, as long as you continue to guess. All right, next. How about this one? Just because it was a, it's a math and science. H2SO4 is how that's pronounced, and we want to know what kind of compound that is. Those are elements. He's looking at the three on the table. Why does it say closed? Uh, this is A, B, and C. It's a closed room. It's open. Okay, so just and then redo it again. Just hit redo. Okay. And then we know out. that it is. Did you ever hear that normal about H2SO4? Johnny was a chemist friend. Johnny is no more. So Johnny thought it was H2O with H2SO4. Uh. <laughs> awesome. All right, let's look at the results. Survey says. D. Yes. I don't think that's the answer though. Let's go back and let's go to the next one. And we go to next. No, it's sulfuric acid. I used to work in the chemical industry, so H2S4, HCL, that kind of stuff. Alright, what's next? Oh. Flips from the net. Now my math people out here, hopefully you can help me out with this because I need to escape from here. And I want this one. And please tell me if you can't hear this, but I have to use the volume on my computer. Because I forgot to bring the cord. Alright, here we go. Volume all the way up on the Okay, now let's go back to the PowerPoint and go to the next clip. The scarecrow misquotes the formula. He says the wrong word. Now most people aren't going to get this stuff and probably back then they might have done it on purpose just because they thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. But now I've got the power on here. Oh wait a minute, let me stop it because I want to go. This is where you have to enter in the answer. Now let's start it. So hit your refresh. If you know the answer, put it in. If you don't know the answer, go I, I D K. I don't know. Do many people put that on any problem? I D K. I don't know. What did he say? He said an isosceles triangle. Well, that's because we don't know how to spell it. He says the sum of of the two sides of an isosceles, the square of the, the sum of the squares of the sides of an isosceles triangle is equal to the square of the remaining side.
Okay, everybody's got an answer in here. Let's stop it. Survey says four people knew it was a right angle. But fortunately, we also had four IDKs. <laughs> but that's the fun of, of doing this kind of stuff. But it's supposed to be a right triangle. So I, it's Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that's the kind of stuff that if you know it, we can get it. But I've watched the Woods of Oz since I was a kid. And even as I've become a math major, never picked up on the fact that he missed quotes. Now, get rid of this. I, first off, I want you to think about this question. How many cones will it take to fill a cylinder? All right, so how many cones does it take to fill a cylinder? And I have a, I also need to turn it down because this one has no sound. All right, now this is going to demonstrate that this cone has the same base and the same height. And it wants to know how many cones it takes to fill that cylinder. Mm -hmm. I use this in my O31 class when we're talking about formulas. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the, the polling here. Figure out how many you need. Let me know. Put the answer in there. If you don't put it in now, it'll tell you by the end. See the volume of a cylinder. pi r squared times height, because it's a cube, cubic volume. So when we're discussing the formulas, this is for a cylinder. And we want to know what the formula is for a cone. So everybody count? That was two. Take it with a grain of salt. It's not full, full, but it's pretty close to being full. So then, this is on one of the, the geometry stuff that we have to do for 031. So it says the end. Now answer the question on the worksheet. And it says, so there was three, all right? So to change it, there's three cups in this. This is one third the amount. So that's how we came up with the formula of the volume of a cone. All right, so let's go back. I didn't answer this one, so we'll just go to stop everything. And it looks like everybody, oh, we had two people choose three. Let me stop it. Just be, two people chose three, and three people chose, wait a minute. So we see how you answer compared to, I know who one and a half was. <laughs> <laughs> So the point two of it. That right, but that's the kind of things that we, we've done by using the internet. There's another one that I wanted to demonstrate to you too because I thought this was extremely interesting. Now, this is do you want to be a millionaire? Now, all my math people out there, pay attention to the question because it kind of threw me for a second. And I'm going to have to go over and um, start the polling. And I'm going to start the video. Turn the down. Thank you. 
Bosch says it's the sum of two smaller square numbers. And what's great is you can't count on the audience. You put the letter in the number. You want to choose A, B, C, or D. But for you, you want to know the numbers. So you're going to just type in. Oh, okay. Hit refresh and you hit the number that you want first and then go right and hit the other number and then hit send. Like this. The answer was 25, and the thing that got me too is when I was doing this. It's a Pythagorean triple. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. So you have 9 plus 16 equals 25, and that's what it was talking about. So let's do, let's see what our survey says. Well, we had more people pick different than the audience did. But I knew, I knew the answer, so that was not fair because I've seen the video before. But when I first did it, I, I read, I thought 16 was it. But if you think about it, there was no two numbers that when you add them together comes up with 16. And that's what it was talking about, the Pythagorean triple. And that's what helped us out with that. All right. And we're all done with that show. We can also use this. The ugly old guy is me, but the cutie pie is my daughter. Uh, she's three. We've got, I'm a foster parent. We've had her since she's four days old. We're looking for a doctor, so she's my You can also do this. I apologize for the background, but you can come up with your own questions. In this, when you go to the setup here, and you want to enter questions, let's get out of here. We Close out of this session. This is how it starts. Now you can start and stop this as you need, as you see fit. Um, if you want to enter your own questions, the downside that I have about question list, I don't have one, is new question list. When you come in here, you can type in your own questions, give what the right answer is, and then present it without a PowerPoint or anything like that. The problem with that that I see is it only comes up on the screen about the size of a heading, and that's it. So it doesn't have the PowerPoint technology that you can play with, and I would prefer not using this, but you can also set this up to where the students can do it by themselves. So if you had a computer or whatever that you could set it up and they could use their clickers and, and do their responses, the next person would come up and they would do it and do their responses and clear it out in that. So there's ways of doing polling, and it will automatically advance to the next question, so you can set it up to be um, solely independent from the rest of the classroom. All right, so that's what I have on the 
on the um, eye clicker. I'm going to open it up just a minute here. Put it back to where I had it. Any questions that you have that hopefully I can help? What's the cost? The cost of the base unit runs about $75 and it comes with the presenter remote. The thing is, is that the software is free because you can download it off the internet once you buy the base and, and the eye clickers. And the eye clickers themselves range from the plain ones that just A through D are like $38 if you buy it from eye clicker. And I don't know if you go to commercial, I've gone even on eBay and looked at them and you can buy the presenter and the wireless unit here for about $75. Yes, sir? Like, when you create your own questions, can you have the question you buy if you're not so many inputs? Yep. Now, the one thing I did show you, I can show you our session here, is I can go into, turn it back on. track of all the different remotes that were used in this. Maybe because I closed it that it's not going to give me what I wanted to do. But you can get into here and actually see the, the responses for everybody that's in there. It can be downloaded to a um, Excel spreadsheet. Any other questions? Kind of um, response that your students given, like I'm using this. Well, because it broke up the monotony of having to listen to me, they were four. I mean, it, it got them a chance to sit there and play with the. And since they have modified it, I think it would be even a bigger response. Because I haven't done this recently. It's been more in the past I've done it, and the students loved it because they didn't have to listen to me. They didn't have to take notes. It was more or less a not really a free day, but it was able to do something different. And they appreciate it. These right here cost about forty-five dollars from eye clicker. Yeah, that's why it's just like having. This is JCCs that we can we can borrow them as instructors from the JCC because they have a stash with Karen Mahler. So seventy-five dollars for the instructor, base, base, and base. Forty-five dollars per whoever you want to. You're paying for hardware, not for software, because you can go online and download the web software. You can download the presentation software just like I had for free. It's, and it's, it's pointless unless you got one of these things. But you can go right to the web thing and download the software for, for nothing. Right. But so they you, get their money from here. But you get, your soft, you get the software too when you buy the instructor stuff, right? You still have to die. You might. Yeah, I'm, I'm just saying. What they did in the past is they had a USB drive that had the software on it. And you could put it into any computer that you were sitting at, and it automatically had the software for you. You ran it from the flash drive. And now, I downloaded it right to my laptop, and I can run it from my laptop, and it keeps track of everything on what I'm using anyway. So if I had access, I couldn't get access to it yesterday because I don't have administration right. But if I could have put it on the computer, and this was because when we log on to a computer, it maintains our records. We can store it on our G drive and we can keep track of our classes that way as well. Any other questions? Well, please take a moment and fill out your response paper there and be brutally honest. If you didn't find it useful or if you thought I was a joke, please put that down. <laughs> I, I, ta I take criticism well, so if you, um, yes ma'am. Yes, please. I wish we could give those as consolation prizes, but they're not mine. So everybody's got to turn them in. <laughs> and that was
sales off of the iClicker site. Now, I don't know if you went to the retail or whatever, because they have to make a profit. Yeah. And they might cut a deal because it's education, people doing it that way. Because businesses can do it too for their, if they have a big deal where they have a meeting for their employees and they want to respond to people, want to keep it anonymous, that would be a more exact way of doing it. I think there are to set up something like that to demonstrate that, that it does have a wireless. I would have to set it up into this room to make sure that it had the ability on the computer to be able to take the Wi-Fi from there. Because I, I tried to download a mouse, a wireless mouse to my phone so that I could use my laptop because I'd forgotten that the instructory mode does that presenter. And it worked at home because I was on the same network. But once I come here and security and all that kind of threw me for a loop and I couldn't do anything. But it was interesting for me, the students appreciated it just to get out from having to write and take notes and listen to me. And anytime they can play with technology instead of listening to me. I can see the for real presentation Yep. And that's what I did at, at Siena where I graduated. I did, as my student project, I had to present to my peers a lot more than I have now. And that's probably the most nervous I've ever been. Is presenting to math people yeah. my findings of doing stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think when it was over, but thank you for coming. Hope you guys had a good time. Thank you for your help.